Hi, this is Phil Hinton, and at the end of December 2008, AV Forums was invited to an evening of HDMI discussion and presentations organised by Asheridge Communications. As part of the event, DPL gave us a presentation on how they independently test and certify HDMI cables for performance and reliability. Jeff from DPL was kind enough to tell us about the potential problems with HDMI cables and what they do to test them. The, uh, the interface is, um, is a whole different type of interface compared to what uh, we've been used to in the past. Since we're moving, A, we're moving out of analog into full digital, and we're running at the speeds that are uh, multiple, multitude times of, of performance over and above what we used to use, we're running into several issues. One is that the, um, the industry is, is new at this high-speed data uh, transmission process. Uh, and the installers and dealers aren't real familiar with it. And so when you put those two together and you, fight, you figure out that uh, we have a little bit of un, un, uneasiness in the interface itself, as far as the content and knowledge, that produces the first problem that comes in with HDMI. And the second problem comes in where the HDMI uh, integrity of these products somewhat just is, is uh, uh, sometimes variable as far as how good some products are compared to others. So what we do is we try to look at the, the interface for all these products, whether it's cables or whether it's sources or sinks, and we try to look at what their overall integrity is. Because the bigger and more robust the integrity gets, the more reliable the interface gets. The key issue has been more of the reliability rather than the way it looks. I don't think anybody would complain that when it's on, it's on and it looks great. But in order to make it stay on, uh, there's a lot to be known and there's a lot of people that don't know what that is. So our big deal right now is trying to keep the integrity high to keep the dynamic range and the, uh, the overall headroom of these products uh, large enough so they can perform and at the same time educate everybody so they understand a, a, at least a better understanding of how to install it. A lot of our members say well you know a 10 pound cable versus a 100 pound cable um, if, if I if I'm putting digital in, I'm getting digital out. Where are they going wrong with that theory? Well, actually, it's a good theory, you know, because in a way they're right. If you figure that you're you're running digital content, uh, once it's um, above the uh, the threshold of being uh, uh, good enough for the interface to function, uh, the likelihood of the interface or the picture looking a little bit different is 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 null. I mean, they're going to look pretty much identical. The differences in many of these products, and not necessarily price consent, uh, price conscience, and that is that we have some products that come in that could be relatively lower, you know, lower, uh, less expensive products, and they could be very expensive products. It doesn't matter what they are, but there are definitely quality issues between them all, and a lot of those quality issues have to do with their integrity. Uh, to give you just a, a very small example of this, uh, the interface uh, on the video side uh, has a specific um, uh, specification, we do it with eye patterns and we actually check the actual overall peak-to-peak -peak value that the eye pattern produces for the, uh, for, the, um, uh, for the transition of data that's being generated through the interface. Now this dynamics, these dynamics can be huge. They could be as much as 50% over limits. And of course the larger you are and the bigger you are, the better off you are. Because no matter what way you look at it, uh, as you add more and more products to your system, the interface is going gonna, is gonna to uh, gain more and more losses. And you've got to build in for those losses. I don't doubt that the, um, the, the lower quality products will probably look maybe as good as the higher quality products. The question I have is, is under, what under what characteristics will it perform? Will it function? Will it actually work? And this is the problems we're running into. We're running into not necessarily just video problems, in fact, video has been actually become somewhat minor now. One of our biggest issues has been in the intelligence channels that actually transfer the HDCP and the EDID um, uh, plug and play information. If these channels don't get transferred uh, perfectly, the unit will not function. So it's not necessarily how good it looks. The question is, will it even work? And that's the differences in these cable products. Um, it upsets me when I see people spending more and more money uh, they're thinking they're going to get a better picture. They really won't. The question is, will they even get a picture? And again, 
depending on what it's being worked with, uh, because some products can work with some source devices, others can work with other display devices. They can mix and match differently, depending on the qualities of each product. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a handle on what are these qualities? How can we score these qualities so that we can make a judgment as far as what should be working with what products? So it's a, it's a little bit of a task, but there is a difference between these products. And they go, a lot of companies go through a lot to make those differences happen. Now you do something rather special <clears throat> in actually testing these cables. Yes. So maybe you can explain to our viewers exactly what it is that you go through very quickly okay. to determine um, whether a product passes your tests or not. Mm. Uh, yeah, we, we, we test a product in a very, uh, a much different environment than HDMI may test it. Um, HDMI has certain minimums in the specification, and that's fine. That's, we use that actually as a baseline. But we know that there's four issues that cause the units to fail. For the interface to fail, basically you've got to have four major things. One is you have to have extremely good uh, timing uh, in, the, in, the, in the entire interface. That means the wire's got to be cut to the right lengths, the circuit boards have to be traced correctly so that all the data appears at the same place at the same time, at the right time. That's the first thing. The second thing is the, uh, there's voltage on the bus. For once in many, many years, there's actually a supply voltage on the interface. And that supply voltage is meant to be used by the sink. And people tend to steal that sometimes and pull, pull power off the bus, or the actual, in a, cable, in, a, in, a, in a particular cable situation, you may find a cable that has so much voltage drop over the course of the cable that it may dip below minimum standards. The actual voltage is five volts, and the minimums are 4.7. So 300, milli, 300, 300 millivolts, and you could be breached, and the unit would not work. So this is another test that we make under the right current modes. So we test for current capability as far as the amount of voltage it can carry. We test for timing on what its accuracy is. We also check for video, and we check the video integrity by way of eye patterns, so we can look at <clears throat> exactly how much mask margin, or how much, how much are they over the minimums. We can actually rate that percentage of how you are over the minimums. So we can actually give us an, an analytical number as far as how much um, the qualities of, a, uh, um, of, of, uh, of the video is over the minimums of what HDMI offers. That's the third thing. And the last thing, which is, has got to be one of the major issues, and that's been the intelligence channel. The intelligence channel is nothing more than an, a, serial, a serial bus. It transmits information for HDCP and EDID. And without those two functions operating, the unit will fail, especially on the HDCP keys. For HDCP to work, it must refresh its keys every two seconds. And all of these we check, uh, uh, as, at least on the serial interface, we check the serial interface for its rise times characteristics to see how, how much quality we're getting on the rise times of the interface. We're finding that there's corruption on these lines and they're not transferring this data correctly. So you'll find even with short cables, the person will hook it up and it won't work. And it won't work because there's an integrity problem on the uh, intelligence channel.